made it this far in the tournament so far. And he's on the main stage, so here we go. We're going to roll. We're in turn number two at the moment. We'll and get there the it is. up as quick as we can. <laughs> Just as we're talking about Doomsayer being the premier drop, it is in this situation. Harvest Golem in hand. This is kind of an interesting one as well. Yeah, uh, I would very much. Yeah. I'd very much expect to see uh, Nizoth in this Paladin build, which makes a lot of sense with the Harvest Golem. Just another Death Rattle to summon from the Nizoth. Yeah, that actually per makes perfect sense. And also, uh, the Doomsayer does lead right into that turn three, so it is a three drop that you can play to see some tempo uh, when you do get that Doomsayer proc off. Yeah. So uh, apologies for the overlay. We are unable to spectate due to a little bit of a bug here. Luffy is running the Warrior, and it is going to be Gulet the Tour on this Paladin at the moment. So we're going to try to get this issue resolved as quickly as we can, but in the meantime, we'll enjoy our our blind look. Looks so, like an execute. Yeah, I mean, Blood to Icker has to be an execute as a follow-up. <laughs> yeah. Blood to Icker, slam it and go. Just <laughs> lose my board. And Harvest Golem going to contest this board uh, pretty nicely. And as you mentioned, uh, Nizoth, that's kind of been one of the talks of the Control Paladin decks, is being able to just play Death Rattle after Death Rattle, get to the end game situation, and then drop Nizoth and resummon all of them. Of course, one of the gods from this set, 10 mana, 5-7, with a battle cry of resummon all your Death Rattle minions. Yeah, if you get that card off and you summon even just like three or four Death Rattle cards, first of all, that's a basically unclearable board because you have Death Rattle minions out. And second of all, that is a lot of power for 10 mana. <laughs> it's a lot indeed. So there we get a look at Luffy's hand, Bloodhoof Brave and Rampaging Ghoul. Uh, you know, this hand feels like it's lacking a bit of card draw, but should he find a situation where he can draw some cards, this is looking pretty darn decent. Yeah, I mean, he did have to invest two of those cards straight into the uh, the Doomsayer. Yeah. So. so, Battle Rage drawn straight away. That is going to be Bloodhoof Brave. Uh, will be met with a swift demise from Guletta Tour's True Silver Champion. Uh, but this is kind of the situation that Luffy's looking for. He's looking for to force Goulet to Tour to respond to something so that he can get an opening to activate that Battle Rage. That's a very important turn for him. Right. And he's going to want to get that as soon as possible. A quality pickup is really important for Goulet to Tour. Uh, going to make it, make it so he's not afraid of those patron waves uh, in future turns. He can play a little more liberally around that and let Luffy go for those patrons and really punish him for that. Is undamaged uh, Luffy himself, though, so that's one yeah. less card from that Battle Rage, but you take what you can get. That's for situations. sure. He does decide to hold on to the Inner Rage. Pretty important to, you know, use for the patrons. Could have used it to cycle, but that would make him a little weaker to Consecration, and just in general, you know, you're trading a card for a card. Yeah, so pretty... Ooh, wow, that's a good one. He is super heavy in this Nizoth build, and I know this is something, I mean, with this deck, if you get Nizoth, it's always going to be good. But when you don't get Nizoth, you are kind of just playing these lower value minions. Um, I know that one of the popular builds is just running a couple of Death Rattles, like Sylvanas, Cairn, Tyrion, just running very high value Death Rattles, not going for these low value like Loot Hoarder and like Harvest Golem and really just trying to get a smaller Nizoth off. Yep. In the meantime, though, you do want to kind of be creeping into to like sort of a value curve. You do want minions that are good Death Rattles on their own, though. You can't just play a bunch of Death Rattle minions. They have to be working into some sort of game plan overall. Yeah, and this is a real nice response from Luffy here. Gets to pick up a card with the Acolyte of Pain, clear the board. Yeah, Rampaging Ghoul, of course. This is one I expect to see in Warrior builds for quite some time. There's that Core Crown that we were talking about. And Corrupted Heelbot joins the party as well. And a Sylvanas. Ooh, that is a... That, is, that hand is getting stacked for Gulet de Tour. You know, Twilight Summoner, that fifth card in Gulet de Tour's hand, I actually saw Kalento playing with this uh, in his Nazoth Paladin build. He seemed to be a big fan of that card. It's a four mana 1-1, one, one, but the Death Rattle summons a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, I mean, what do you really do against that? Do you let it live? You kill it. it. It's it's a much better version of Dreadsteed, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting <laughs> card. I mean, it pre it presents low value initially, uh, takes a few turns to get online. But if you kind of compare it to a more expensive Nerubian egg, it's pretty good. 
game liking it. And the Corrupted Healbot, I mean, it's so good versus Warrior. Oh, I mean, here it's insane. You don't even care about the death row. It's with the five mana six six. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you're not even going to care about your opponent gaining eight health just because you're battling for card advantage. Wow. But here it's just strictly extra damage. It's going to be Luffy. We're getting uh, smoke shot mean, in here. We're going face, boys. And that is scary if you're in Kula Tatora's position because I think he was completely fine with them trading the Sylvanas. That really goes along with his plan of making a drawn-out game and getting to that stage where he can is off for the game. But now, I mean, Ragnaros Light Lord, he could coin it out, but it's not guaranteed to heal you. And if it doesn't heal you, you would lose instantly. Well, it's only not guaranteed to heal him if he trades if he with trades. the Sylvanas. He could decide not to trade, but then you're also leaving up three more power. So, I mean, is this a spot where you have to do something else? I don't I think I kind of like the Ragnaros Light Lord here. I mean, you're going to be... not trade? You're going to roll up to 17. I'd go for the 50-50. I probably... Yeah, if you're uh, playing a Ragnaros uh, card, you should be used to going for 50-50s. <laughs> <laughs> Just hoping it hits the right target. Come on! Yeah. One-time game. <laughs> I think... I. You know, I think... I, I really want to say don't trade, but I am in agreement with you. If, if he trades uh, he, and he gets the heal to face... Yeah, if he doesn't He's trade, such uh, good shape. Luffy would only be one off lethal. But, of course, he would have to worry about the Ragnaros Light Lord there. Now, that being said, I'm not opposed to equality right yeah. here and just consecrate. This, this is uh, certainly safer in his mind, but it's actually going to lead to his death. Uh, Corcoran Elite plus that Hunter Hero Power plus the Axe is nine damage. And that is going to be enough for Luffy to end game one. Yeah, but we find this situation over and over again. Players taking what feels like the right risk but it doesn't pay off. Luffy, that smork shot. Finley dealt five damage this game, and it didn't even try. It didn't deal damage itself. Well, it kind of did. Yeah, it's debatable. It caused four extra damage to have in this game. Luffy locking up game number one with, uh, we're going to call it Patron Warrior. And this is Aggro Warrior, dude. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's stop lying to ourselves. <laughs> Aggro Warrior it is. Um, we've been seeing it perform over and over again, just kind of like, Playing stuff and hitting them in the face. I mean, a real, works. real sleeper of that game was kind of Blood to Icker. I mean, it doesn't generate card advantage like Slam does, but the 2-2 got in for some damage. It got an extra card off the Battle Rage at the end of the day. So got him card advantage, got him damage, and really enabled that kind of aggro warrior play style to be a thing. Yeah, really important card. Such a fantastic one from Old Gods. When I first saw that card, I was kind of... I was a little bit intrigued. So I was like, this is kind of like slam, but yeah. you get it. The card you draw you is get a 2-2 two two onto the board. Yep. And um, it costs one. Which so is, that's a pretty big deal. I'll take I'll take a free Emperor Thoros on discount on my slams. And I'll take a 2-2 two two being drawn onto the board instead of in my hand. That's a good deal. Yep. Yep. So if you guys uh, if you guys are interested in what's going on here at the MSI EGLX event, uh, we want to know, we want to hear from you as well what you guys are thinking of the event, what decks you've been playing and who you're rooting for, and what you would like to see be on top at the end of the day. You can tweet at MSI Tweets using the hashtag EGLX and give us some of your thoughts. You can also tweet at That's Admirable or at Chalky underscore HS. Would love to know what you guys are brawling with out there on ladder. I mean, this event, we're seeing, we're, this is like the first look at what competitive play yeah. uh, looks like in this, in this environment, and that's a very exciting thing to think about. Less than a week old for this format. Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever wins the Grand Finals tomorrow, I would expect to be getting net deck the next day. I'm going to net so. deck it. Me too. I'm going to net deck tonight. Same. I can't wait to net deck tonight. I'm just going to take whoever was on top today. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to be seeing those guys that put in the hours of preparation in the past few days that are really on the cutting edge of figuring out the meta. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about who are the, deck, the best deck builders are in Hearthstone. I'll tell you who it is. It's whoever is on the top of these events. Yeah. I mean, the guys winning are the guys who are building the best decks. Yes. Period. No question. There is no debate about it. All right. So we're going to roll into game two, and it looks like it's going to be that Paladin deck coming out again. We do see a tech choice of uh, Harrison Jones in there and Rogue for Luffy. Yeah, really interested in the Harrison Jones. I mean, Death Spite's gone it, from the format. He, he did keep it, but... You gotta think, how impactful is it in a in an oilless rogue? You know, there is deadly poison. Maybe Luffy sits on a deadly poison two charge weapon and gets punished massively. But well, it does provide you a little bit of tempo taking out the dagger, and it yeah. can't draw two cards. It is just uh, card advantage and tempo. Yeah. Yeah, that's a totally fine five cost minion. Um, it is a little bit surprising to see, um, simply because Despite not there, and Despite was kind of like 
the premier weapon. It was something that, you that really was a wanted to get major rid of. threat, and it required answer very oh, Especially often. for Paladin. Yeah. So it's going to be Aldor, Aldor, Spellbreaker, and the Zoth already in hand. I mean, that's not one you want to draw early on. Uh, well, I mean, we did see his deck is jam-packed with Death Rattles. So that's kind of the merit of having so many, is that when you do draw it, you will he will draw those Death Rattles in the next six turns or so. So, At least he hopes he will. I mean, I guess in theory, you just draw, like, really bad stuff. You can't always just never get lucky. Yeah. It's a possibility. Slow play for both these guys so far, just hero powers back and forth. Ooh, and this is where maybe oh. he could bait out that deadly poison. Looks like he wants to play a little bit more on curve. I don't blame him for setting the truce over champion here. I like the way it lines up with his hand. This is going to preemptively uh, target Azure Drakes and two pillagers. Well, what I see here is there's almost no reason for Luffy to use the dagger. And if he's using it, he's redaggering. So you're always going to get two cards off that Harrison next turn when you equip the true silver. You don't give your opponent a minion two dagger down. Yeah. So if he's if he w wants those two cards, this play is basically going to guarantee them. And there's really no punishment that can come out either. Yeah. He isn't going to set that de the deadly poison either, so just going to play a 3-3. Three, three. And Forbidden Healing, this is a card that's been very surprising to me at how strong it is. We'll get to that in a second. That belongs in the museum at the moment. Two more cards. Rugulet the tour as well as going to occupy a little bit of extra mana from yeah. Luffy. Interestingly enough, though, I mean, none of these cards uh, in Gulet the tour's hand do anything to a stealth gadget and auctioneer, which is coming up really soon. Yeah, I mean, we're approaching. You know, normally, under the old circumstances, right. this is what you saw happen turn five. Admirable. Five. Team left, team right. Pick one. I'm going team right this time. I'm, I'm sticking team left. You would. Yeah, I am. Back-to-back -back auction. It's the second time we've seen <laughs> know, America Road great. deck draw back-to-back -back auctioneers. <laughs> yeah, we touched on this earlier. You, you run two copies of this card because it's so important to draw, but you basically never want to draw both copies. Yeah, and this turn's really awkward for uh, Luffy. I mean, I think he would have liked to go with a different play than Shadow Strike. It's kind of premium removal in this deck, especially with preparation. But uh, Phantom Knives and Deadly Poison, he was one man off doing that, setting up the Deadly Poison dagger. Yeah. Shadow Strike, of course, the new Old Gods card. Three mana and deals five damage to an undamaged character that can go face if your opponent is undamaged. Gosh. If, if Gula Tator can get that Tyrion to die <laughs> and then Nazoth it, that is insane. I feel like it's very rarely that you want your Tyrion. I hope this Tyrion dies. I really hope I can get this to die. I hope my eight cost card just bites the dust. <laughs> oh, man, I can't kill it off. I guess I'll have to just let Tyrion live. It is really, uh, this is a really I'm solid Doomsayer. Yeah. yeah, this is a great Doomsayer play. We just talked about how this Auctioneer turn is kind of like the premier turn that Miracle Rogue is looking for. Gulet the Tour has basically said, go ahead and play your Auctioneer. Yeah. It gonna die. And, yeah, I mean, for, for Luffy here, there's also going to be a 2-1 spawning. Yeah. So you kind of want to take care of the Harvest Golem. I mean, but do you really want your turn to be Deadly Poison, Kill It, Go? Well, he does have two gadgets in Auctioneers, so I don't mind the idea of, like, Auctioneer, Coin, Poison, Kill the <laughs> front half of the Harvest Golem and just say Go. You draw a couple cards, you let that the Doomsday activate. insane. I don't think it sounds insane. You got a second Auctioneer. What are you going to use that second one for? I mean, you are kind of popping the coin there, though. You're, you're cycling the coin, which... I think it's really valuable in later turns. I don't mind it. I mean, it wouldn't be awful. I don't just mind. I also don't mind just like Azure Drake backside, or even just poison attack. That's yeah, I wouldn't too. mind cycling the Azure Drake, but maybe he's looking towards Azure Drake fan later, possibly. That is kind of the new board clear for Rogue. I certainly would like to see some cycle his turn. Instead, he's just going to pass. Go let the Tor can pick up something good here. Corrupted Heal Bot. He's getting those death rattles out, and that Nazoth is going to be nuts. So, so far, we've only seen Harvest Golem die. So it's not going to be that crazy yet. But if Luffy can't pick up Sap for Tyrion, and he has to go through it the hard way, he's going to get some bad news on turn 10. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hard enough to go through Tyrion with a rogue if you don't have Sap, let alone oh, oh, team two left. Tyrions. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Check mark left. Keep a tally of these. And ones. we've also got one for Team Neither. 
because he just died too the guy, fast. The guy, the guy that I'm, it's, I'm not even guessing and competing against me is beating me right now in these. <laughs> it's always the left. You know, there's some guy in chat that was just like, neither. <laughs> Concede. <laughs> <laughs> just quit. Yeah, so Luffy just went with just the conceal. Uh, decide, you know, not to go for any crazy miracle turn quite yet. Can do that next turn, maybe. And can make a big Van Cleef, but Paladin is one of the decks with answers to it. Yep. And, I mean, just in the hand alone, Galur Tatur has four answers to Edward. <laughs> <laughs> and that Forbidden Healing, I wanted to talk a lot about this card. This has been one of the most surprising cards in the set to me, where I looked at this initially and I was like, eh, this is like <laughs> Tree of Life. Ain't nobody going to play this thing. I'll tell you what. A flexible heal that can heal for it's, up to 20. Right. It's pretty solid. Yeah. I, I'd compare it more to Reno the Accent. Yeah. And you don't have to dilute your deck to play it. Exactly. Which is a huge strength. And with healing going away, kind of with Healbot going out, um, I mean, it's very important to have healing where you can get it. Yeah, it's going to go with Twilight Summoner and Keeper Voldemort. Keeper Voldemort largely dead in this matchup, but that's going to be the go ahead for Luffy. He what? untaps all of his turn right. with a Gadgets and Auctioneer in Where do we play. start? But buckle in. That's where we start because this turn's about to get crazy. Probably starting with Backstab somewhere, right? Because if you if you start with Fan, then you can't Backstab. You could Backstab the 5-5, five five, I guess. Well, I imagine his eye is a little bit on that Corrupted Heal bot. Think he plays Blade Flurry? I don't know. I mean, it's a card. A lot of, a lot of pros, especially rogue players. I've heard Firebat and Amnesiac talk about how Blade Flurry is probably still a one of. I'm not sure I'm sold on that just yet. Oh, wow. Blood Mage is a fantastic pickup. Yeah. That definitely is going to give a lot more power to this board clear if he can, you know, get a board clear. You know, I remember back in the day when we played these Gadget and Auctioneers, we just got going. Yeah, not much time. Yeah, I mean, he's running short very quickly here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure he's going to make the most optimal play uh, knowing that he's running out this quick. I think he was a little afraid of fanning away that 1-1. One, one. Doesn't want to give the value. Oh, second back step gets drawn. Where did he throw that oh. shift? Oh. Get it off. So no backstab this turn. Yeah. Just queued up the attack before he saw the backstab, I yeah. suppose. Clock burning. I mean, this is something that, I, that we've seen a lot from Miracle Rogue in the past. Is it's you have to stabilize them. You have to really know what's going on All right, to well. stabilize the board position post. And that's going to give Gula to turn 5-5. And a Tyrion. Now, Team Both is, uh, is feeling pretty good about their chances this turn. Because <laughs> I feel like that second auctioneer is coming down. <laughs> Team right. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> that doesn't count, man. <laughs> Scam odds. Two preparations in hand. Luffy's got a good chance to draw a sap. I mean, he is deep into that deck, and he hasn't seen one yet. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him kind of start going now. He's thinking, does he need to backstab now? Because you do have to choose backstab or prep right now. Yeah. Because um, if you prep, you know, prep backstab, Ellie Giggle. Yeah. I, li <laughs> I like the backstab first, just yep. to dig. Agreed. We're really going to get a glimpse into this rogue deck's win condition. We do see Saucy Deckhand uh, coming out. But, and I tell you, if he doesn't pick up Sap, there's a Cold Blood. This right, take out the uh, Faceless Destroyer. No sap still. There's the faceless. But here's a second preparation coming. Oh, he's going to cold blood first just to cycle. He really needs sap. Oh, this is getting dangerous. Like, he needs sap. And he's got to get going. Time is running out. No uh, sap still. <laughs> I don't think he has time. Time burns oh, out. Gosh. It is two copies of cold blood, faceless, and South Sea deckhand. That's his win condition. And but that Tyrion stuck to the board. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't kill my Tyrion. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I don't think you'd be too unhappy if you're going to lose I think I'd just dissolve anyway. You only would get two, right? Just Harvest Golem and Twilight Summoner. And Faceless. Oh, no, no, no. And the uh, Corrupted Heal Bot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's real good still. <laughs> I mean, you just saw how much Luffy struggled to clear a big board. He struggled to clear two minions. Yeah. How's what? he going to clear all of them? How's he going to clear five? And there's a 5-7 in addition to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's Not going to be greedy. Here we go, boys. And this card is insane at ending games. Oh, my gosh. And there's even a loot order in there that we forgot there's about. There's the sap! Oh, Just in time! No! 
That catch and that's an a tilter. <laughs> <laughs> that catch the auctioneer probably would have stuck around if that sap had been drawn. I mean, you're, you're oh, looking at man. Goulet the Tour playing Spellbreaker and instead of instead this of this is, off. Last this turn. is really where the live environment comes into play. You know, you might be really good at playing Hearthstone. You might be a ladder hero, but when you show up to these events and you're on the stage playing, time goes by pretty quick. There's a crowd that you're looking out on. You're under the lights. You know the camera's going. It's it is very different. I mean, I remember my first experience being there. It was it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things you just really need to get experience in. And I mean, back to the game, I don't see a way Luffy stays alive at all. And he can't he kill is him. He's dead. Yeah, I mean, as your Drake lead is. I mean, we were talking this morning about Nazoth ending games, and you weren't convinced. Here it is <laughs> in the tournament. I'm convinced. <laughs> I just wasn't sure you could get to that point very safely. Yeah. 6, 11, 12, 13. It is 19, 21. Yeah. Exactly he, with that If he killed grade. the heal bot, he would be alive, but uh, decides not to, and that's going to finish it up. Yeah. So bam, bam, and bam. You know, corrupted heal bot's pretty good if it doesn't die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And even if it does die, you just it's get it off. back with this off. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah, so game number two going over to Goulet the Tour, tied at one game apiece now. And so there you have it. That Paladin build, it's something that I've seen a bit of. I haven't tried it myself just yet, but Chalky was telling me about how strong this deck was. Yeah. And wow, that, I mean, that one looks solid. Oh, yeah. I mean, you were pretty worried about the Nazoth being in hand so early, but that is a definitive game ender if you can cast it. Yeah. Uh, that's really the only worry I would have about the card. And it's kind of why you see some streamers that have been playing a deck similar to that. They put in Infested Torrin, which is a, a four mana 2 3 taunt. Not insane. It spawns a 2 2 when it dies. But when you Nazoth, it brings back a taunt, which can be really important to keep you alive when you invest your whole turn into it. Yeah, and I, that's really the important reason behind that card, uh, including that list. Didn't see that in Galuta Tour's list, but yep. does even up the series 1 to 1. So we're going to get to see some other decks from him. And uh, maybe yep. just the Rogue again from Luffy. Or yep. maybe his uh, his mage deck. Yep. So Gulet the Tour's got Warlock and Rogue left to roll with. Uh, meanwhile, for uh, for Luffy, he's got Rogue and Mage that he still needs to win here. And Warlock, we've yet to see played uh, on stage so far. So really looking forward to seeing what that deck could be. Man, I'm so curious. I want to see the Warlock deck so bad. I think it's just Zoo. I just want to see. I, yeah, exactly. I want to <laughs> see Darkshire Councilman just beat people oh, up. Oh, man, that card kills people. It is so good. Yeah. I mean, you kind of look at it, you're like, ah, oh, three minute, one, five. Big deal, right? Go ahead and leave that guy around for a turn. <laughs> you see what happens. Yeah. I've made some the nine power Councilmen myself. You Usually me. you don't get to choose if you leave it around. It's a one, <laughs> five. That thing's hard to kill. Zoo does an excellent job at establishing that early board control. It is going to be uh, Freeze Mage, it looks like, for Luffy. And Gulet the Tour is going with his Rogue at this point. And Freeze Mage, we've seen it have some pretty good success in our first broadcast match. Curious to see exactly how it can face off versus Rogue. This feels like it's one of its better matchups, though. Yeah, and I mean, we are seeing a lot of similar archetypes coming out in these first two matches. But... Like you said, I kind of want to see this Warlock come out. Uh, that is what we have as the highest recorded win rate deck in the tournament. But uh, Freeze Mage and Rogue obviously doing quite well. Uh, we've seen them in basically every player's lineup in, in these first two matches. Almost every single game we've seen has had either a Rogue or a Mage in it. So it's going to be Coin for Gulet the Tour at this point. Just wants to get that 3-3 on board. Luffy holding on to Forgotten Torch. Likely a uh, strong answer. Make that a pair of them now. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, Gulet Tour did pass up on basically his opportunity to make an Edwin. Uh, his hand now kind of lacks cards that make a big Edwin. Um, of course, wouldn't really do much with a 4-4. would probably end up in the same end result. <laughs> this guy's toast. Yeah, I'm just going to play a 3-3. I mean, showing the importance of, of where the Rogue stands in this matchup. Rogue is very much the aggressor. Yeah. in this particular matchup. It needs to get something on board, and it needs to start attacking. Yeah, no heal bot, no Lothab means if Freeze Mage makes it to an Alex Raza turn with a nice block up, you are dead. Yeah. Like, like actually just dead. Yeah. 
They're speaking of, speak of the devil on the ice block. So Arcane Intellect Novice Engineer looking like potential play for Luffy. Maybe the loot hoarder. Would like to say that Novice Engineer to draw immediately in a pinch later on. Yeah, and for Luffy, he really does need to find a solid turn to get the ice block down uh, before he can really just start going for it. But does decide to opt for the draw first. Can't really blame him for. Do need to find the key cards before you can even worry about killing your opponent. Tell you what, Tomb Pillager is scary. Every time that minion attacks me, I'm like, but do you kill it? This is like, bad. <laughs> I really don't want him to have a coin, but I really don't want to take five. Yeah. Can't just keep eating those shots over and over again. It does have a little bit of a life total to play with still. What to do? What to do? I mean, this is a tough turn for me. None of his options look too terribly appealing. Yeah, I mean, Blizzard is really just delaying things a bit. You do get to kill something. And I, I was about to say maybe should have drawn first, but that Lou Hoarder is going upstairs. <laughs> Let's get him. You need every point of damage you can get. And he's leading into the Flame Strike yeah. as well. So if the Lou Hoarder actually gets picked off here, um, he's totally okay with that. I actually would say that's kind of a win for I mean, Lou Yeah, Lou. you got four extra damage. And if you're not going to Alex Straza this game, potentially, which is something you do need to worry about, uh, with, you know, any Freeze Mage build, really. Sometimes Alex Ross is just not in your top 20-so cards, and you have to just kill them with the burn spells you get, which is a lot more viable now that uh, Antique Healbot isn't a card. Yeah, Flame Strike wiping up the whole board, but two coins for Gulit Tour, And that's uh. a Gadgetan Auctioneer drawn. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling team right here. I, I'm just feeling team Auctioneer. <laughs> now... We haven't seen Auctioneer really uh, matter. The one road game we've seen won so far was just was just straight killing them. Yeah, it's going to matter quite a bit here. I mean, yeah. this is a lot of gas that Gulet Tour is going to pick up He's in addition to having the big Edwin. And now two Earth and Ring Farseers in hand. And he's got Conceal, and he's got Cold Blood. This is a wow. ton of damage. He's going to choose to go with the 8-8 over Conceal. The I like it. You got to get damage in. That's what this matchup's about. Definitely true. Might draw out an Ice Lance even, and do you really mind if your opponent, say, fireballs your Auctioneer? Nope. I mean, your hand's looking really good with uh, Azure Drake, two Farseers. Two Farseers is like a lot more healing than you really can play around. Yeah, I totally agree. It's gonna lead with Arcane Intellect here. And a bit of help. Oh gosh, I mean, leaving that auctioneer around is so scary. There's no way that's sticking around. Um, he's got a lot of burn in his hand if he can survive. I so mean, over the course of two turns, he does have 27 damage. You know, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, I'd be okay with turn, Fireball face. What about just Doomsayer? Well, okay, here's what I'm looking at. If you burn this turn, and next turn you Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Ice Block, and then you pyro, you win. You gotta stay if he alive. Has no healing. Though. You have to stay alive. Yeah, he won't kill you. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he yeah, won't. He's got an auctioneer out. Yeah, he won't. What he's if gonna use an ice lance too? So Alex Straza or a lot more burn. And need to be picked up here for yeah. Luffy if he wants to win this one. And then meanwhile, let the tour. Hey, I, look at I, that. I kind of like the uh, <laughs> the throw, burn, and pray plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, this is, man. This is. Bad news for oh, Luffy. You man. go to the ends of the earth to kill an auctioneer. Yeah, number two. With conceal. Yeah. Cold blood. Why not? Just because. Just rogue things. <laughs> I'm picturing like a, like a, one of those pictures, those really inspirational yeah. pictures where you're like in the middle of a field. And, and one auctioneer is dying, <laughs> but the other one's right there. <laughs> Just rogue things. Well, I mean, Luffy not quite out of it yet, but he's going to need to pick up insane draws after insane draws. Yeah, well, Conceal is on the menu here this turn, so is losing two power by not concealing first? No, no, no. He played the Oh, uh, he played auctioneer. the Auctioneer. Yeah. My bad. Same. Sometimes you miss him. It just was sitting in play for so long, I felt like it was the last one. He just looks just like his brother, I mean. And they have a little, like, kind of distinct birthmark. <laughs> you can kind of tell if you're experienced. You're very experienced where auctioneer brothers are concerned. <laughs> I don't think second Doomsayer or, or second Acolyte of Pain 
is uh, what Luffy wanted to pick up here. So if you go Acolyte and just set Ice Block, you could still draw. Man, you thought we were dead when he had 12 and yeah. play. Now he has 16. Look, I'm trying, okay? I, I feel you, but... Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> it really, I would really like it to happen because it'd be kind of cool, but it really just is not. Well, I'll tell you what. If he gains, let's say that both of these, some chance, both of these doomsayers die. Okay. To damage, not to saps. Okay. Not to anything else. That ice block might not get popped. You know, double lepernome would be lethal here. <laughs> if the ice block doesn't get popped, he can draw an Extraza. And then if that happens, the ice block then gets popped, and he jumps Frostbolt. I don't even know what you're going on about. Like, he's going to lose this game. <laughs> I'm trying to find a way, okay? Okay, Kriparian. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, well. He spots the craziest stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, right off the bat. It's like, well, I mean, there's a way. What if he just drew Flame Leviathan? <laughs> I just can't wait to hear Crip cast and Yogg's are on. <laughs> it's, it's just after every spell. Okay. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this turn's pretty good. It's okay. Oh, he is killing a Doomsayer. I don't think he's getting the block pop somehow. These auction returns are so crazy. It's like old patron, dude. Like... <laughs> All the players are roping out. Like, he had a block pop this turn. Did he get it? No. I don't. Yeah, he didn't, did he? No, both of his minions have attacked so far. Wow. God, never Alex. <laughs> Do you think he had him with Alex? I mean, Alex is I mean there's two or the He also has to draw a frost ball. All right. And then also another oh. ice block. Yeah, yeah. He can get there. Frost Nova wouldn't be too bad. Oh, come on, Alex. Come on. You're one <laughs> card away. Yeah, he's donezo. He's pretty donezo. I don't, I mean, I just don't. Yeah, it's not happening in this game. <laughs> we tried very hard to get to this point. It's funny you mentioned it's like Old Patron. I like how New Miracle, which is like Old Miracle, is like Old Patron. Which a lot of people called Patron the new Miracle Rogue when that <laughs> came out. Well, I don't remember people having this many ropes with Old Miracle. I guess there's just more stuff to do. The turns are harder. I mean, back yeah. then it was yeah, a joke. It, it was an overpowered Leroy, deck. Leroy, Leroy. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, I mean, that you can't screw that up. <laughs> Unless you can't get. Uh, fair enough. I conceded it to him. He showed me lethal. Wait, who was the guy that shadow stepped his Leroy and killed it into their hand? Oh, that was Puffin. Puffin did that versus yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, God, that was good. He, he didn't know that you drew the card before yeah, the Shadow yeah, Step Box return. Near Prox. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can win. That was a fun match. And it is interesting to think about how Goulet Tator is going to go about ending the game. I mean, he's got all the tools to do it. He did burn an Eviscerate off the draw. I, I believe that's the two damage toxin that he picked up. I'm not familiar with the pictures on them just yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I mean, I somewhat am, but... Looks like he's going to backstab his own Zeril. That's going to burn some more. Okay. Well, not quite yet. That one's the plus three attack, which I'm a big fan of that one. It's just blasting him, man. That's yeah, a that good card. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to pop again. He's going to get the Alex off, dude. He's almost out of cards. I mean, this could be a problem. <laughs> Gonna kill the acolyte. Um, I'm not sure how much I like that. And there's the frostbolt draw, but he just used the ice lance. But he drew a roaring torch. That's a lot of damage. I'll tell you what. Is it enough a, though? If he draws an ice block, there's gonna be a fatigue card. At least one. If he draws a second ice block, there's gonna be two fatigue cards. That means there's 18 health to go through, which he's got 18 damage. Right now, there's um, 20 health to go through. He does not have 20. Or he does have 20, actually. He needs time, though. He needs ice block, number yeah. two. Yeah. Ice block number two would be game, actually. Like, just game, straight out. 
you just go Roaring Torch Face, Frostbolt Face, Pink Face, Ice Block, and you win. How did we get to this? <laughs> I'm, I mean, the Ice Block never got popped. Yeah. You just, gotta um, pop the Ice Block. Yeah. I mean, you can draw as many cards as you want. You still got to deal 30 damage. Yeah, this is a series where we've seen both players kind of be rushed on their auctioneer turns, not have enough time to do their optimal play. And I mean, listen, when you get the auctioneer and you get all those preps, like you said, you've got the cards. Now you, you just have to execute. You, you only have about 75 seconds to finish your turn. You've got to get moving. Up to 21 now, so a bit more to chew through. If he pops an at five, is Frost Nova good enough? I think it is. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh, it is, dude. Frost Nova or Ice Block for the game. No. Well, we still do have a draw yeah, here. Yeah, he, he can still stall out. Needs to draw with that Acolyte. Um, is removal an option? Could he freeze the... Could he freeze the Edwin? That's a good question you're asking now. And then Ice Barrier. Now, the problem with this is if Luffy's he would die. been paying attention to cards... There's a Cold Blood. He, he, I mean, he's got to know there's a Cold Blood. Like, two Cold Blood yeah. seems like it's standard for these builds right now. Yeah, um, he would die. But he hasn't seen South Sea Deckhand or, or Faces Manipulator. Is he thinking yeah. that that's in this build right now? I mean, it's very hard to think about those things in these tense situations and think about exactly what cards your opponent has. <laughs> but if, if you do have the clarity of mind, you know your opponent almost certainly has another Deadly Poison. <laughs> They almost certainly have another backstab. And they usually have another cold blood. And they almost certainly oh. have another stab. Cool. There it is. That's going to keep him in the game for at least another turn. It's Frost Nova Doom's here, right? I don't know. You know he's got the sap. Is, is there any merit to Frost Bolting? I think there is. I think Frost Bolt would be a little better here. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's going to punish him much. I think I like the Doom's This increases there. the fatigue damage a little, so... Let's see, he'd be down to 17, go down to 15. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be too relevant, but it would save him the mana in the future because this Doomsayer is certainly getting sapped. There's another there's another Frost Nova in the deck. And there's a Blizzard, too. There's a lot of stuff to stall with still. Yeah, and he's... Okay, the thing I do like about the Doomsayer, he can't sap the Acolyte now. Yeah, that's a really that's good a, point. That's a draw, and that is incredibly important. Three coming in, it sets him to two. Luffy needs to find Do a way to protect himself next turn. you let the Doomsayer go off? No, there's no way. You can't. It would deny the Acolyte. And you've got lethal showing, but then Frostbolt would stop you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, that can't be the play. <laughs> but it's something he's thinking about. I want my 18 power on board. That's what I want. I, I agree. Yeah. But there's no way to stop that Acolyte. I mean, I might even consider concealing here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you can seal. Yeah. You're never going to get used out of that card again. Like, feel like a bit of a mistake to me. Oh, how much damage That's is that now? That's not enough. 12, 13, 14, 15. Still needs a little bit more time. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be 15, 16, 17. He's but, one off, I think. But now is removal an option? Uh, well, uh, so you, you would freeze the 12, 8. So if you froze a 12-8, killed a 3-3, three, three, an ice barrier, I don't know, man. He needs ice block. Oh! Frost Nova again! Yeah, Frost Nova and Frostbolt face, and that's game! He's going to win this game! He can also just ice barrier. He doesn't necessarily have to Frostbolt face. Either he, one's going. He can do both. Yeah. He's going to get the, uh, the Doomsayer off here. But with the fatigue damage, that is game. Yeah, Next turn, he it. will have lethal. Two fatigue, sets him to 17. The three fatigue is going to set him to 14, and that's 15 damage from hand. Luffy has found a way to win this game. <laughs> what in the world? Wow. The <laughs> that is an incredible sequence of draws. The presence of mind for Luffy to know that, like, he needs to dig for these specific cards and to use everything so patiently... Yeah, I, I mean, mean there, there's a chance I would have conceded this game. Just gives up. And that's that's it. Wow, what a fantastic game number three. As Luffy takes the lead, that locks his mage. He's got Rogue left to work with now. Yeah. Uh, versus the Warlock and Rogue.
of Guleta Tour. And, you know, that is, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. You know, being on stage, being under the lights, in front of the crowd with the cameras rolling, that this, is very this different. Really, like, this game just illustrates that. It's like, listen, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're like, hey, anybody could do this, like, I don't know, no. man. We've seen know. both of these players rope their auctioneer turns. Yep. Because when you're up there, you want to make sure you're making the best plays. And so you start thinking. When yeah. you start thinking, you lose track of time, and suddenly the rope hits. And when that rope hits, you go, oh, no. This is, <laughs> well, I forgot about that. Yeah. And then it, it, you're just in panic mode. Yeah. I mean, we saw that happen. I mean, you're really just trying to cast spells, and you're not casting the right ones, and your initial plan turned into your nightmare. I remember when I very first started playing Miracle Rogue a couple years ago, it was super difficult for me to play because I wanted to think through my whole turn and think through it a lot. I was like, guys, there's so much stuff you could do. Yep. Eventually, I just realized you got to start start going. Oh, you yeah. You are not going to play the deck 100%. You're going to get close, but you just got to make strong plays and draw a ton of cards. I mean, when you draw eight extra cards, do you really need to play that well? I think Rogue has a, uh, on our streamed matches, which mind, keep in mind we only have two, Rogue has a 0% win rate when Auctioneer is played. <laughs> <laughs> what a strong card. <laughs> It's a trap. <laughs> I knew Sprint was better. That is a Flame Imp, and that is a Sea Giant. Guleta Tor is playing Zoo. I think it is one of the strongest builds ever. Like, it's been a strong deck since Hearthstone started, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. I think as long as there's Life Tap, Flame Imp, and Void Walker, you have a Zoo deck. Yeah. Smeta's same. Shadow Strike kept wow. lucky. Shadow Strike is a pretty good answer to Councilman, actually. Yeah. And that is a powerful hand. Whoa, Nelly. There's no backstab for Luffy either. Second Shadow Strike. I mean, you're looking at coin SI7H next turn. Yeah. But look at Gula at the tour's opening. It is not slowing down. Well, apparently you got something even better. That's the uh, the new Murloc card. Yeah, Biofin Tide Hunter. Yep. Summons a 1-1 one -one Taunt Slime. I'm going to opt to go with that. It's a little less power and a little less durable, and it's going to leave him open to the fan of knives. So I'm not really sure what the merits of that were over the double one drop. It does make his curve better. Uh, next turn, he could go like life tap and a one drop or a two drop and a one drop. So getting the higher cost cards out of his hand first, but it will make him weaker to the immediate answers. I am kind of still liking uh, the SI7 agent here. Although preparation, Phantom Knives, and Dagger yeah. hit the Flame Imp looks really appealing as well. I would start with Prep Phantom Knives and really consider based on what I drew. There's also just maybe you draw Edwin Van Cleef and just crush them. You know, I'm okay with just the coin on the SI7 agent here. It's going to Prep Phantom Knives anyway, though. Yeah. So yeah. should have done this first, but yeah. just a small error. Not really too big of a deal. I mean, even if you drew Edwin Van Cleef, you might still not yeah. like it that much. Yeah. Which I would probably go with Edwin Van Cleef, but yeah. that turnaround right there made such a big difference. If Gulletzer had gone for Flame and Voidwalker, I wonder if this would have been a different turn three. But Phantom Knives is really the only thing he was vulnerable to. So now this is wow. very likely, I think, when you, to be poisoned. When you tap and play two Flame Imps against the deck that wants to kill you, that's kind of a bad start. Yeah. And not just necessarily kill you, but kill you with burst damage. Yeah. I mean, there's cold blood in hand already. I wouldn't be surprised to just see that come out next turn along with, like, a shadow strike onto the whatever, whatever Goulet Tator plays. And King Boss. And, and the Void Walker. Void Walker, yeah. yeah. I mean, cold blood's looking pretty darn appealing here. Yeah, he can't clear fully unless, uh, yeah, I don't see a way to clear fully unless he wants to invest all of his attacks into the board and the Shadow Strike, which I doubt he'd be looking to do that. Maybe he would, though. Gosh, if only Shadow Strike can just hit face any time. Now Zoo is a lot more one-dimensional in the fact that if you leave behind a one-health minion, what are they going to do about it? Juggle it down, hopefully? There's no implosion now, which is huge. Yeah. I mean, it's got to get it's got to get better for early board control. I think that's like the spot where you can attack. And this so, deck. this is why you know we're gonna see this play from Luffy is he's gonna pass up the immediate damage because it creates plays like this in response. And now is where Luffy can look at this and say, Oh, oh my gosh, I get to cold blood now. This is so good. He might even just heal up and, and trade again. Yeah, honestly, could do that. You could get the blood mage alongside get the blood mage of it. Down. 
Luff, the point here is that Luff has got all the options in the world, and Gulat Tatur has basically had his options stripped away from him. And this is a very critical spot of the rogue deck. It wants to get to positions like these because it operates so well with a low card economy. Yeah. Like basically, any time the rogue's got three or four cards in hand, it's got a ton of options. Some of the aggro decks, when they have three or four cards in hand, really only one that's very appealing. Yeah, and I mean, for Zoo, it is still a very powerful deck. But it definitely lost a lot of the comeback potential it had with Implosion, and especially Night Juggler Implosion. Uh, and that dagger's not what he was looking for. How much damage is this? So Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, and Cold Blood would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16 damage, it looks like. Yeah. I'm liking it. I mean, I'm okay with still trading into the Defender of Argus. Yeah, I mean, putting the uh, Thirds and Ring Farce here into it, I don't have a... Yeah, so you're just going to use a little more, a little more efficient cards. Once again, the point is, oh. so many options. Well, when you draw backstab, eh. This game is all right. You are right. And the answers for days on top of that. Ten to the dome. Let's make it eleven for good measure. Why not? Gulat the tour is going to need something good. I mean. What's that? Uh, what's that five nine taunt that can't be targeted by I mean, that, that spells thing costs your powers? Nine. Sagoth. So we needed Innervate and Sagoth. <laughs> yeah, why not? Just casual, yeah. I wouldn't even win him the game though. Just keep him alive. <laughs> yeah, not gonna work this game. All smiles though. Good sportsmanship as he walks away. Luffy's gonna take this match three games to one with Rogue, Mage, and Warrior. Seems to be a good lineup, man.